Hi guys, welcome back to the session. Today we are going to learn how to do string operations in Automation Anywhere A2019. So let's get started. So I'm inside the control room of Automation Anywhere A2019. We'll quickly create a new bot. So for that we'll move to bots, my bots. And let's create a new bot from here. Let's give the name as string operations string operations demo let's click on create and edit and here we are in the edit task bot page let's quickly search the app package as string from here so this is the string package which provides actions to perform string operations now if you expand this one here we have multiple of actions which we can use for the string operations so there are several scenarios where string operations are required. We will look into few scenarios in the today's session. So let's begin with the first scenario. So I have few files under this projects folder. So you see the format of the file. We have the format of the file as it begins with data text. Then it has a date, month and year. So let's say that there is a requirement to extract this date, month and year separately from all the files in this project folder. So how to do that? Let me show you. Now our file name is in the format of data, then date, month and year and all these fields are joined with a dash. Now if I want to extract this date, month and year separately, what we are going to do? We are going to use the split function with the delimiter as dash. Now once we do this, the output will be data, then date, month and year and all these will be stored inside a list variable. Now this list variable is not a new variable in A2019. This was also present in A11. So this list variable holds the collection of values and the values can be of type boolean number or string data type. So let's see how we can do this task in automation anywhere. Now our first task is to fetch the file names from each of these files in this project folder and later on use the split action. So let's see how we can do this in automation anywhere. We'll move back to automation anywhere. So first of all, I'm going to use the loop action from here since we have multiple files. So I'm going to drag and drop this loop action from here. Let's drag and drop it over here. Let's move to list view. And here we need to select the iterator type. So from this drop down, we are going to use the iterator type for each file in folder. Since we are need to work with each of these files in this project folder. So we are going to select this for each file in folder. Let's go with this iterator type and then we need to provide the folder path as well. So let's copy this folder path from here and let's paste it over here. And after that, we need to assign the file name and extension to this variable. And that variable will be a variable of type dictionary. So we learned about this dictionary variable in the previous sessions. It is a variable which takes key and value pair. So let's create a dictionary variable. Let's click on create and let's give the name as file data. And this is a variable of type dictionary. Let's click on create and select. So this dictionary variable file data is created. Now the dictionary variable for files has two keys. First one is name which holds the value of file name and the second one is extension which holds the value of file extension. So our first job is done. We have fetched the file name inside this dictionary variable. Now we are going to use the split action. So let's click on apply. And under this loop, I'm going to add the split action from the string package. So from this string package, I'm going to select the split action. So here is the split action present, which splits the source string into multiple strings using a delimiter. So let's drag and drop it over here. And make sure that you have added this split action under the loop. So if we move to flow view of the task, you see over here under this loop, this split action got added. So make sure that this split action is present under this loop action. So let's move to list view again 
and let's see what all details we need to provide over here now our source string is the file name which is present under this dictionary variable file data so let's provide the source string as that dictionary variable so for that let's press f2 and from this drop down let's select this file data dictionary and since this is a dictionary variable we need to provide dictionary key as well now the dictionary key will be name to provide the file name so let's click on yes insert next we need to provide the delimiter so here we discussed that the delimiter would be a dash because all these texts are combined with a dash so let's provide the delimiter as a dash then our delimiter is not case sensitive so let's go with this option then we have two options again split into substrings so do you want to split into all possible substrings or a specific value so i want to split into all all possible substrings so we'll go with this all possible options now the next option we have is to assign the output to a list variable so here we need to create a list variable where all the substrings will be stored so let's create a variable so for that let's click on create variable and let's give a name over here so let's give the name as list data and this is a variable of type list let's click on create and select and let's click on apply now we are going to display those substrings inside a message box so let's add a message box action over here let's drag and drop it over here and in enter message to display i am going to display the date month and year which are inside the list variable so i am going to write date is then press f2 and from this drop down let's select that list data variable which we just created so let's select this one now for this list variable we need to provide the list index as well so under the loop when the split action occurred for the first time the data this data was stored in the index 0 of list variable this date was stored in the list to index 1 and then april was stored in the list index 2 and this year was stored in the list index 3 it is in order that is 0 1 2 3 so here we need to provide the index to store the date and the date is in index 1 so i'm going to provide over here list index as 1 let's click on yes insert then i'm going to again write month is and then press f2 and this list index i'm going to take as 2 let's click on yes insert then i'm going to write year is press f2 again and from the variable select list data and provide the list index as 3 and let's click on yes insert so we have displayed the values of date month and year inside the message box let's click on apply now at the end of the loop i'm going to clear the list so let me show you what i'm going to do so this is a string package where we have different actions so from here i'm going to select this clear action i will tell you what it's going to do so in this list action i need to provide the list variable so i'm going to give the list data variable which we created now what this list action what this clear action is going to do it's going to clear the list and why it is required since we have provided over here the index as 1 2 and 3 which is valid for the first iteration that is for the first file but when the second iteration will run for the second file all these values will be stored in the next indexes that is 4 5 6 7 to avoid this case we have cleared the list so that the values will be stored always in the 0 1 2 and 3 so let's save this bot and let's quickly run it to see how it works i will click on run and my bot is running now and here you see we got the message from the first iteration that is date is 2 month is april and year is 2019 we got this date month and year from the first file let's close this one and then bot ran for the second iteration and we got the values from the second file as well so let's close this as well 
So let's move to automation anywhere again and let's close this. So in this way we extracted the values of date, month and year from the file names using the split action of the automation anywhere. Let's look into some other actions of the string package. So let's open a file. So we have a file where the where there is a string value that is automation anywhere version A2019. So let's say that from this string I want to extract a substring that is version A2019. So how to do that? So for this case there is a substring action under automation anywhere. So let's see how we can use this one. Now before using the substring action we need to open this file and then we need to read this complete data as well. And later on we can use the substring action. So let's see what all steps are required in this project. I'm going to disable these actions now. Let's disable these actions and let's add action to open this file. Let's add actions to open this file. So for that I'm going to search for the package CSV text. So this is a CSV text package where we have these actions. So first of all I'm going to add the open action and let's see what all details we need to provide here. First we need to provide the session name. Let's go with the default. Let's select the path of the file as the desktop file. Let's select this desktop file and click on browse. And from this project folder I'm going to select this file. Let's click on open. So the file part got placed over here. Now since our file doesn't contain any header, so we will go with this unchecked option for this contains header. In the case if the file contains header then we are going to check this box. Next option with us is to select the delimiter. So let's go with the delimiter as comma. As of now we have only a single string present. So the delimiter doesn't matter so far. So we'll go with the comma delimiter and we can check this boxes trim leading spaces trim trailing spaces and let's click on apply. Now once we open this file we need to read the file as well. So let's add the read action over here. Let's go with the default session name and we need to assign the output to a variable. So this string this automation anywhere version A2019 will be assigned to a variable of type table. So let's Cell create the table variable from here. Let's give the name as table data and this is a variable of type table. Let's click on create and select and let's click on apply. So the string this automation anywhere version A2019 is now stored inside this table data variable. So this file is no more required to be opened. So at the end I'm going to close this file. So we have closed this file. Now we are going to do the string operations on this variable that is table data variable. So let's open this string package where we have this substring action. So this is the substring action present which extracts a substring from a given string. So let's drag and drop it over here and we need to provide the source string. And our source string is this table data variable which holds the value of automation even anywhere A2019. So I'm going to press F2 and from the drop down let's select this table data variable. Now since this is a table variable we need to provide the row and the column. So here this string is in the first row and the first column. We don't have any other data. So the row will be 0, the row index will be 0 and the column index will be also 0. So let's click on yes insert. So our source string got placed over here and then we need to provide the index from where our substring starts. So let's say that this substring that is version A2019 starts from the index 21. This V is at index 21. But it's not a good practice to provide a hard coded value over there. What if after some days the string got modified to welcome to automation anywhere. So if the string is modified to welcome to automation anywhere so definitely this index position is going to be changed. So we are not going to provide the hard coded value over here. So what we are going to do 
we are going to find the position of this index using the find action and later on we are going to use the substring so let me show you what I'm going to do I'm going to add a find action over here before the substring let's drag and drop it over here so in this find action let's see what all details are required so the source string will be nothing but this string this complete string so the source string let's press F2 and from this table data variable this row will be 0 column will be 0 press CS insert and what string do you want to find I want to find this version A2019 let's copy this one from here and let's paste it over here and we do not want to make it case sensitive so we will go with this do not match case option and then we have the option the value the find string which we have provided is a regular expression or not so this version a2019 is not a regular expression we will also look into the regular expression in our next example so we'll go with this not a regular expression option and this start from is an index which is optional we'll skip this one and we need to assign the output to a variable and this will be a variable of type number and this variable is going to store the index of this version A2019 that is the starting position of V so I'm going to create a variable over here of type number so let's click on create variable and here let's provide the name as index and this is a variable of type number let's click on create and select now this index variable we will use in the next action that is the substring action so let's click on apply for the find action we are done let's move to substring again and here we have already provided the source string let's provide the start from here so let's press F2 let's delete this one press F2 and from this drop down I'm going to select this index variable let's click on yes insert and then the substring which will be extracted this substring which will be extracted we need to assign it to a variable so let's create a new variable over here and let's give the name as substring extracted and this is a substring extracted variable of type string let's click on create and select so now we have the substring that is version A2019 inside this substring extracted variable now let's say that you want to have all these letters in in a uppercase so how to do that so we have another action for that as well so this is a uppercase action let's drag and drop it over here so it converts the source string to uppercase so I have not clicked on apply so let's click on apply we are done with the substring so in this uppercase action so we are going to take the source string as press F2 and this substring extracted variable which holds the value of the substring so let's select this one let's click on yes insert and we are going to assign the output to the same variable so I'm not going to create a new variable so from this drop down we are going to select this substring extracted variable so what this uppercase action is going to do it will take this source string that is substring extracted it will convert the substring to uppercase and then it will assign that uppercase string to the similar that is substring extracted variable so let's click on apply so we are done now at the end we are going to display this inside a message box let's add a message box over here and let's press F2 and from this drop down let's select this substring extracted variable let's click on yes insert and let's click on apply now to summarize this one what we are going to do we are going to open the file which contains this welcome to automation anywhere version A2019 then we are going to read the string this string we are going to read from that file and then we are going to close that file now once we have the string with us we are going to find the substring index so this find action is going to find the index of the substring that is version A2019 
and the index the variable index which we got in this action we are going to use this index variable inside the substring action and this substring action is going to provide us the substring variable that is version A2019. Then we have added this uppercase action which is going to convert the source string to uppercase and then we are displaying it inside a message box. So let's save this task. We'll quickly run it to see how it works. So let's close this file as well. Let's save this one and I mean I will quickly run the bot and we got our substring that is version A2019 and you can notice over here this is in uppercase because we have added the action uppercase so let's close this one and let's close this as well now let's look into some other string actions so I'm going to search for the string package and from here I am going to look into the other string action as this replace action. Let's drag and drop it over here. And I am going to disable all these actions. We have seen all these. Let's disable these actions and let's focus on this replace action. So this replace action is a combination of find and replace. It finds a string and replaces it with another string. So let's see what all details we need to provide here. So first of all, we need to provide the source string. So now let's create a source string as a variable from here. So I'm going to create a variable. So for that, let's click on create variable. So this is the variable name of type string. Let's provide a default value over here. Let's keep the default value as email ID is and I'm going to give a email ID over here. So let's give the email ID as underscore test dot email at gmail dot com. So we have provided the default value as email ID is underscore test dot email at gmail dot com. So what we are going to do using the replace action, we are going to find this email ID and then we are going to replace this email ID with a new email ID and we will do this using the regular expression. So let's see how we can do that. So let's click on create and let's provide the source string as the variable which we just created. Press F2 and from this drop down, let's select this source string. Let's click on yes insert and here we need to provide the find string. Now in the find string, I'm not going to provide the exact email ID which I provided under the source string. Why? Because many a times we don't exactly know what we need to find the complete string. We don't know, but we know the structure. So in that case, regular expressions are very helpful because it helps us to define a search pattern. So we are going to use a regular expression from here. So I'm going to use this website to show you a demo how to create a regular expression. I'm going to delete this one and let's delete this as well. So let's say that our email ID as underscore John dot a one two three at gmail dot com. So we have an email ID of this pattern and we need to create a regular expression so that all the email IDs of this pattern can be identified. So I'm going to write the regular expression over here. Regular expression is used to define the search pattern. So I'm going to write the regular expression over here as my email ID can start with the alphabets from A to Z in caps on or in caps of that is A to Z then it can contain any number from 0 to 9 then it can have the special characters as dash underscore and this character can be repeated any number of times then I'm going to write the regular expression for this dot so I'm going to write a dot over here so to use dot I'm going to put a slash then a dot since this dot is a meta character then I'm going to write the expression to find this a123 so again I'm going to write the email ID can contain a to z then 
a to z in small then 0 to 9 and dash and underscore and this also can be repeated any number of times so let's put a plus and then we need to write the expression to identify this at the rate so I'm going to write over here at the rate then we need to identify this gmail.com so here I'm going to write the expression to find this gmail so I'm going to write it can contain a to z or a to z in small and this also can be repeated it can occur several times so let's put a plus then write the expression to identify this dot so for that I will write a slash and a dot since dot is a meta character and then we'll write the expression to identify this com so again I'm going to write a to z or in small a to z and this can be repeated starting from 2 to any number of times so here you see this entire email ID got identified with this regular expression so any email ID with this pattern can be identified with this regular expression so I'm going to use this regular expression in automation anywhere let's copy this one and let's move back to automation anywhere so in the replace action find string I'm going to provide the regular expression which we just created so let's paste it over here and then it is asking when finding a match case or do not match case so we do not want to match the case otherwise it will be case sensitive so we do not want it to be a case sensitive then the find string is a regular expression so let's check this box then start from and count are optional so let's skip this one here I'm going to provide the replace with email ID so let's provide an email ID over here let's give the email ID as john underscore one dot qa2 at gmail.com so the email ID which is present in the source string will be replaced with this email ID and that will be assigned to our output variable so let's create a variable from here let's give the name as destination string and let's click on create and select so we have provided all the details under this replace action first automation anywhere is going to find the email ID with this regular expression under this source string then it's going to replace that email ID with this string which we have provided then it's going to assign the result to this destination string so let's click on apply and I'm going to add a message box over here let's add a message box and we'll press F2 and from this drop down let's select this destination string let's click on yes insert let's click on apply I will save the bot and let's quickly run it to see how it works and my bot is running now and it displayed the new email ID that is email ID is the new email ID which we had provided so it replaced the email ID successfully using the regular expression which we had provided for the email ID so let's close this one and let's close this as well so in this way you can also use regular expressions in your project the regular expressions are very helpful in certain cases and let's move back to the string package so we learned several actions under the string package today we have already learned this extract text action in the session of JSON data extraction so let me show you so this was the task which we created in the extract JSON data task so here we had used this rest web service action which is used to post some data to the server and in return in the output we are provided a JSON data variable which provides these values that is name job ID and created at so from this string we need to extract this ID which can be done with the help of this extract text action which we had used in that session 
so here in the source string we provided the json data variable and then we provided the before value and the after value and the value which will be present between these two given values it will be assigned to this output variable so in this way this extract text action works it is used to extract a substring between two given strings so we learnt different string actions with different examples in the today's session please try to do hands on on these actions and let me know in case you face any queries and that's all for this session guys hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a like and share with your friends and hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos and i will see you soon in the next one bye bye